I'm rejoicing in you, my Lord. I'm rejoicing in you. I'm rejoicing in you, my God. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin in me. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin in me. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin in me. Let the praises begin. Let the praises now fill the earth. Let the praises begin. Let the praises now fill the earth. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin in me. The praises begin. Let the praises now fill the air. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin. Praises now fill the earth. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of life. Hearts are yielded now before you, responding to the sound of love. Let Praises begin. Let the praises begin in me. Let the praises begin. Let the praises now fill the air. Oh, let the praises begin. Let the praises begin in me. Let the praises begin. Let the praises now fill the air. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin. Let the praises now fill the air. Oh, joyful, joyful. Praises begin in me. Let the praises begin. Let the praises now fill the earth. Let the praises begin. Let the praises begin in me. Let the praises begin. Let the praises now fill the earth. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Walking with the King. Living in you, Jesus. It's the very best thing. Walking with the King. Living in you, Jesus. The very best thing. Walking with the King. Living in you, Jesus, is the very best thing. And I want to praise you for everything. I want to praise you now. I want to lift my voice. Shout and say, praises to the Lord, most high, the living God. Praises to the name of Jesus. Praises to the King, the Lord our God, the most high. Praises to his to the name of Jesus. Praise you, Jesus, for everything. 
praise you, Christ Jesus. We praise you, Lord, for everything. We praise you, Christ Jesus. We praise you, Lord, for everything. And I'm singing to you, Lord. Oh, Keep silent, I lift my voice in praise. I will not keep silent, I will lift my voice in praise. I will not keep silent, I will lift my voice in praise. And I praise you, Lord. And I praise you, Jesus. And I praise you, Father. And I praise you, Holy Spirit. And I praise you, Jesus. And I praise you, Father. And I praise you, Holy Spirit. I will not keep silent. I lift my voice in praise to your name and I'll not keep silent. I lift my voice and praise your name and I'll not keep silent. I lift my voice and praise you, Lord, and I'll not keep silent. I lift my voice, I celebrate. For this great salvation, and I praise you, Lord, for your faithfulness endures forever. And I praise you, Lord, for your faithfulness, and I praise you, Lord, for your loving kindness, for your loving I don't keep silent. I praise you, Jesus. And I not keep silent. I praise you, Father. And I not keep silent. Give him praise. 
I'll sing like the redeemed of the Lord. I'll shine like a light. I'll shout like a saint. I'll sing like the redeemed of the Lord Christ Jesus. Sing, come sing to the Lord. I'll shine like a light. Come on. I shout like a saint. I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus, the redeemed, the redeemed of the Lord. I shine like a light. I shout like a saint. I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus, the redeemed of the Lord. I shine like a light. Come on. I shout like a saint. I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus, the redeemed of the Lord. Come on. I shout like a light. I shout like a saint. I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus, the redeemed of the Lord. I shine like a light. I shout like a saint. I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus. Oh, the redeemed of the Lord. I shine like. I shout like a saint. Shine like a light. I shout like a saint. I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus, the redeemed of the Lord. Shout. Everybody, I'll shine. I'll shout. Keep silent. I praise the name of Christ Jesus, and I'm not keep silent. I praise the name of the Father, and I'm not keep silent. Praise the name of the Holy Ghost, and I'm not keep silent. And I not keep silent. I praise the name of the Father. And I not keep silent. And I not keep silent. I praise the name of Christ Jesus. And I not keep silent. Praise the name of the Father and I not keep silent. I praise the name of the Holy Ghost and I shine like a light and I sound like a saint and I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus, oh, the redeemed of the Lord. And I shine like a light. And I shout like a saint. And I sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus. The redeemed of the Lord. And I shine like a light. Shine like the redeemed of the Lord. Go to Sedan and 
evangelische paradise. Halleluja. 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 Shine like a light. Shine like a saint. And sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus. The redeemed of the Lord. Shine like a light. Not keep silent. Not keep silent. I lift my voice and praise. Not keep silent. 
not keep silent. Shine like a light. Shout like a saint. Sing like the redeemed of Christ Jesus, the redeemed of the Lord. We are the redeemed of Christ Jesus. We are the redeemed of the And I not keep silence. I'm not keep silence. I lift my voice and praise you, Jesus. I not keep silence. I lift my voice and praise you, Father. And I not keep silence. Praise your Holy Spirit, and I not keep silent. I lift my voice and praise you, Jesus, and I not keep silent. I lift my voice and praise your Father, and I keep silent. I lift my voice and praise your Holy Spirit, and I not keep silent. Son above. 
responding to the sun above. Be glorified. Be glorified, Christ Jesus. Be glorified in me. Be glorified, Christ Jesus. Be glorified in me. Let the power of your grace now shine. Let your rivers like water flow. Let the power of the name of Christ Jesus shine. Let your rivers like waters flow. Let the name of Jesus be glorified. Let your spirit like rivers flow. Let the name of Jesus be glorified. Lifted high above all other things. Let heaven be revealed through us. The glorious church of Jesus Christ. Let heaven be revealed through us. The glorious church of Jesus Christ. Father, let Jesus be glorified in me. Like rivers, let the Holy Spirit flow. Whatever it takes, Father, let the name of Jesus Christ be glorified. Like rivers, let your Holy Spirit flow. Let the name of Jesus be exalted in my life. I yield everything to you, Lord. I yield everything to you. Change me, God, now and strengthen me to fulfill what you call me to do. To fulfill what you call me to do. I will shine like a light for you. I will shout like a saint. I will shout like a saint. I will sing like the redeemed. I will sing like the redeemed for you. As you strengthen me, Lord. As you strengthen me to live. To live. I will shine like a light for you, Lord. I will shine like a light for you. Shout like a saint. I will sing like the redeemed. I will sing like the redeemed. As you strengthen me, 
Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. I will shine like a light. I will shine like a light for you. I'll sing like the redeemed. I will sing like the redeemed. I will shout like a saint. I will shout like a saint for you. As you strengthen me, oh Lord. As you strengthen me. Oh, Lord, Lord, in my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified, oh, in my life. Right now. Uh, in my deeds, deeds, Lord, be glorified. Oh, be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. In this praise, O oh God. In this praise, Lord, be glorified. Oh, be glorified. Oh, Father, we thank you that you teach us how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. How to cooperate with the things, oh God, that you've supplied to us right out of heaven. So that we might be your representatives. That we might be your witnesses. That we might be those replications, oh God, hallelujah, of your life. For truly, Lord, we not have a different kind. But uh, we are of your kind. <laughs> we, we live by you and in you because, Lord, you died for us. You became as a seed planted into the earth that sprang forth and brought forth much fruit after its own kind. Oh, Lord, we thank you today. <laughs> thank you, Father God, that you've washed our sins away. Thank you, oh God, that you redeemed us by such a high price through the blood of Jesus Christ. That you spared no expense for us. You spared not your own son, but you offered him up for the sins of us all. Father, today I pray that there would be a life-giving surge of your grace and of your mercy received by everyone. That the things of your church, that the things of the Spirit, that that which you purchased with your own blood, Lord Jesus, may begin to be revealed. Oh God, we pray for Pentecost at any cost. Father, we pray for the great baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Father, we pray, oh God, that the things that are lacking, oh God, that they would be restored. That the things that remain that are of you, they be strengthened. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that every side track, that every wrong track, that every distract, oh God, we become apparent. 
Oh. That here in this place, oh God, there will be a people prepared unto every good work in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. You know, last night, my daughter was ministering to me, and uh, you know, I was, she was preaching a sermon to me on the way home. First of all, welcome everybody. We're glad to have you here. We're blessed to be able to join with you as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to be praying in Jesus' name that every one of you come to know what that means. It means to function as a member in the body of Christ, a member in the person of Jesus. Huh. To take up a place that only the Holy Spirit can assign you to. No man can assign it to you. We can witness it as God's servants, but can't assign it to you. Only the Holy Spirit, he divides individually according to his will. But the glorious thing is the manifestation of God's own spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of holiness is given to every single person so that we may prompt it. So that the per so that person, Jesus Christ, may be revealed. Because that's the whole reason the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came for one reason. To reveal Jesus. To glorify Him. To make Him known. Hallelujah. To draw all men in the, uh, doing the work of the Father. The Holy Spirit's here doing the work of the Father. Drawing all men to Jesus. He's here doing the work of the Father. Glorifying the name of Jesus. And what He's purposed to do it. And He's only purposed to do it this way. Through you and me. He remains in an invisible realm because it's only in that invisible realm that God can establish things in our life that are necessary for eternity. It's the way it's got to be. You'll have to ask him about it later. But I guarantee you there's things that are going on where you are learning to yield to him, flow with him, move with him in his love and his joy and his peace, his long-suffering, his gentleness, his meekness, his temperance, coming unto him, learning the lowliness and, and brokenness before his presence. Ho sabadateke, understanding what it means when Paul said to the Philippians that Jesus emptied himself and, and took upon himself the form of a servant and has called you and I to come and walk in the same glory, the same kind of love, the same kind of grace, to come move over into a realm where not men can control us or men can manipulate us or men can turn us, but the Holy Spirit can move us and control us. It's not about humility and meekness and brokenness to impress people around you so they can run over top of you or whatever. It's a state of receptivity to the Holy Ghost because I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have to ask God, oh God, let your river flow through me when he's asking you to allow him. The better way to say it is, Lord, I'm going to allow you from here on out. I'm going to allow you. I'm going to allow you to flow through me. The priest said, oh God, Arise unto your, unto your place before us and now go and subdue all of our enemies. And if there wasn't some priests to believe that they were supposed to grab a hold of the ark and bear it up before the people of Israel, the glory of God would not be made manifest because that's the Father's protocol. That's the way he says he's going to do it. Hallelujah. They would say, oh Lord, come now and be pleased to return into the place of your rest. Hallelujah. Uh, how about that today? I can't, be, I, can't, I can't be casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, and preaching 24 hours a day. I don't have to go lay down for a little while. I don't have to take a little bit of rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I just say to the Lord, come now, oh God, be pleased to return into the place of your rest. But for the most part, I mean, our job is to shine like the light under the, uh, under the world. And that's not possible unless there's the rivers of living water, the rivers of, of the Holy Spirit. Rivers. I mean, uh, un, 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 uh, an uncontainable, unlimited, huh, this is what Papa has for you. I mean, first of all, you're going to have to believe that this is what his will is before you're ever going to move forward. Second of all, you've got to believe it's available. And third, you've got to want it more than anything else. First of all, you've got to believe that's what God wants for you. Second of all, you've got to believe it's available. Third, you've got to believe you've got to want it more than anything else. Let me say it again. First, you've got to believe that this is what God's will is for you. Second of all, you've got to know that it's available. And third, you've got to be willing to want it more than anything else. Let me say it again. Let me just say it again, because I'm going to tell you right now, we're acting like God's, we're waiting on God. Oh, God, how long? He's looking at us, how long? You know, it's like Israel of old. Awake, oh, God, awake, awake, oh, God. As in the days of old, oh, God, when you slew the dragon, when you, when you subdue Rahab. And, of course, he's talking about Rahab being a word that means rebellion. And uh, a word also used for Egypt, and dragon also used the word for Egypt. And he turns around and he says, you awake. Awake, awake, and put on your glory. Put on your strength. Hallelujah. I have Father's been saying it over and again. He's got people, he, you know. He raised up Israel to be the ones that would go everywhere, showing forth the glory of his kingdom, the beauty and the splendor of his ways. 
And they were, not, they were not willing to bring forth the fruits of that which God had given to them the privilege and the opportunity to have and live in. <laughs> and he said, I'll give it to another nation. Talking about a holy nation. A little apostle made up of Jew and Gentile. Scythians included. <laughs> They're the worst people on the face of the earth in that day. And a, 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 a precious treasure to me. A prized treasure. Say, see, you've got to begin to understand the love that God has for you. You've got to understand, first and foremost, that he spared no expense for you. Romans 8, 32. He wanted a relationship with you. He wanted, there's something that he purposed and he designed in Adam that nobody has even had the answer to yet. Oh, God, what, are you, what is Adam or man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? We haven't even discovered it yet. It began to be revealed in the man Christ Jesus. God's got a desire for a relationship with us. He's got a desire to teach us, but he's not going to teach us in a profane realm. He's not going to teach. I don't care what any popular belief is. I don't care what religious beliefs are. I don't care what's ca causing the masses to arise and get all you know, excited about having their ears tickled. God's called us over to a place of coming out from among them and being separate and touching not the unclean thing, to come into a place into his holies of holies because there is no holiness outside of the holies of holies and by the blood of Jesus Christ, you and I have been privileged to come in. God has honored us and privileged us with, pri with the ability to be continually filled with his glory, to be continually filled with the spirit. And I'm afraid that too many people are just simply, they, they, they just, it doesn't, doesn't really mean a lot. It's not valuable to them. It's not foremost in their heart and their life. Other things are valuable. We've been given the honor to be endued with Christ Jesus, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We've been given this honor to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's both with us and in us. I mean, we, we, we forget G, wherever the Holy Ghost is, Jesus is there. I mean, Jesus is the right hand of the Father right now, but we know that he, that he dwells in us by the Holy Spirit, which he's given unto us. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, Jesus is there. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. Jesus and the Father sent the Holy Ghost because it was without the Holy Spirit. There's no way this thing is going to move forward. There's no way that you and I are going to yield to Him until we're willing to be separate from everything that is contrary to Him. Everything that is opposed to Him. God's never going to agree with darkness. He's never going to agree with death. And I'm so happy about that. He's never going to decide, you know what, I'm going to have a death. Well, I've decided, you know, 10 billion years from now, he's gonna, you know what, I'm going I'm to go ahead and have a death. Father made relationship, and the reason that you love it, and the reason that, that nobody can get accustomed to death because it was never supposed to be. There's something that Father wants to do in you and me, and, and it's, it's going to begin to be realized as we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit as he fills us up with the love of the Father. And there we begin to find the realms of faith that, that are that are meaningful, because you can have all faith and move mountains and without love. It doesn't profit anybody anything. Really, you can, you can speak with the tongues of men and angels. You can have these giftings of the Spirit. You can have the display of the power of God. But if there isn't the knowing of God, the intimacy with Him, the relationship with us, with Him, He's just simply going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. You depart from me, you those that continue on in sin. I don't know you. Father's looking for a relationship. He wants that relationship. And He wants us to learn how to yield to the Lord. And, and as I was saying, you know, Ruthiana was speaking to me, preaching to me last night, ministering to me last night. She wasn't preaching to me. She was ministering to me and just, you know, I'd ask her, I said, well, how's things been going? Have, have the, are the kids still acting like the parents or are they cooperating yet? Ha, ha, ha. See, everybody gets really, really silent when it's real true. And then they giggle when it's kind of true. Uh, you know, I'm just, I, I, am being, I am being somewhat truthful. You know, I'm not a politician. Did you, how many of you knew that? This is my biggest problem in ministry. I, I, when I started in ministry 34 years ago, the, the, the ministers of the gospel that witnessed me coming into ministry said, listen, you're not going to be successful. And I said, uh, I, I don't think I said anything. They said, you're not going to be successful. You're going to have to completely, uh, you're going to have to reach into God to have a completely different preaching style than he gave you. So we just want you to know that this isn't, this isn't going to, this isn't going to look pretty. And this isn't going to, ha, 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 ha. And I'm just going to be what God told me to be. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you right now, too many people's kids, well, you know what, all your kids, everybody's kids act like their parents. Because you created after your own kind, spiritually, you created after your own kind. And then what happens is we've watched it over and again, you know, I was with, we were with Joel Stockstill the other day. And, you know, I, I love the Stockstills and what God's done through Bethany and the, and the, and the, and the solid commitment to, 
the Pentecostal movement that has been there uh, overall. And, um, you know, just really just dealing with, you know, the issues of, that, that, that we face and deal, trying to, to grab a hold of people's children and now teach them a different way than the parents have learned. And people don't want to yield their children over to the church. They want to hold on to their children and want to say, what they tell you to mean? What they tell you to do? And then go, you know, get all upset, either go to move to another church or get someone on the phone and tell them the what for. Uh-huh. And give them a piece of their mind. It's the last piece they ever have. But, you know, so, you know, Ruthie was telling me, no, Dad, there's been a breakthrough with kids. There's been a breakthrough. I mean, some of the parents have literally let go. You can feel it in the spirit. They've let go. They've resi- they're They've resigned their kids over to the kingdom of God. They're not trying to run, you know, they're not trying to mitigate anymore. They're not trying to figure out what's going on. They're going to start walking in trust (laughs) and walking as the community of the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, it's, it's amazing. Enemy runs a little bit of interference with the things that the Spirit of the Lord has done and established in the church. And people are so negative and fearful. All they do is they focus on the wrong things the negative things, and forsake the right way. They forsake what God said to do, the way, that, the way that God said to do it. And she began to tell me, she said, you know, Dad, the Lord just began to deal with me about the, the, the ten virgins, the five foolish, and the five wise. And the reality of it is, it, we want to make it all at the end of time, and it has an application there. It has an eschatological application, but the reality of it is, it's those who are who are waiting on and tending to the things of the Spirit that are always ready to respond to the voice of the Master. Uh, When the voice of the Master comes, there is a whole group and population of people, they weren't ready. They got to run, try to get ready. They got to go try to find some way to get into the program so that they can participate with the voice of the bridegroom. And we find this all the time. God's got his movings. God, listen, every moving of God that has ever taken place in the history of the church always took place in the midst of a people who were prepared for the Lord. They were hungry for the things of the Spirit. They wanted the movings of God in their life more than anything else. They were there tending to, to as it were, to the lamp, to the light in the house, to the light in the holies of the holies. They were there tending to the things of the Spirit, hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Then when the voice of the bridegroom came and spoke and said, move out, go speak these words of life, go do this, go do that, there was the signs and the wonders and the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost because there was a people who recognized that the Holy Ghost, Christ Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Father is both with us and in us. Lo, behold, I'm with you. I'm telling you, listen, look and see. He says, this is really what Idoah is, could be translated. Look and see, I'm with you even unto the end of the world. Hallelujah. 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 Be, look and see. Look and see. Praise the name of Jesus. Look and see, I'm here with you right now. You know, when, when God's people choose to set the Lord before them and at the right hand that they should not be moved. They ch- it's a choice you make. When you choose to recognize that God is in you. This is how, this is how we perfect every man, Paul said. We warn every man, teach every man, that we may pr- present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. How? In what context? Knowing that Christ is in you. Hallelujah. The mystery of the fellowship. Not the mysticism of the fellowship, but the mystery of the fellowship. Hallelujah, the unveiling, the revelation of Christ coming to live and abide and dwell on the inside of us by the Spirit which He's given to us because He's made us the temples of the Holy Ghost. People, I'm telling you, you've got, you're running constantly up against a, a force of hell, a strategy of Satan that wants to distract you to some degree to keep you from ever fully participating, fully yielding over, fully trusting and, and walking in the program that Father has established when he purchased the, the church with the, with the blood of his only begotten son, Jesus. Listen, the only reason that Abraham was obedient was because he was devoted and consecrated to absolutely, no matter what, obeying the word of God. Because there's no way he could ever put into his theology or his concepts or ideas of God to take now his son, his promised seed, and go off for him like the, like the Amalekites. To go off, from, go off from, like those who worship Moloch among the Moabites. Huh? On a mountain. There's no way. What, his con- the, the, what made, 
What made the difference was his willingness to be sold out, consecrated, to obeying the word of God at all costs. There's, I, I watch as we edit God's word continually. People are all excited about orthodoxy. God's not excited about orthodoxy. He's excited about orthopraxy. He's not excited about how right people have got it verbally and mentally. He's excited about what people do with it. How right do you have it in the way that you conduct your life? Because the hearers are not made righteous. The hearers are not justified before him. It's the doers. This is what God says. And if there's anything that you and I have got to do, is we've got to get into the doing part of it. But by, by, and besides that, I mean, you, go, you can't imagine having a better life than the life that the Word of God describes. You can't imagine having a better life. To have a bit in your mouth to where that you never complain or argue. I mean, I'm just happening to just be right now in the moment, just right this moment, thinking about Philippians chapter, um, what is it, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, isn't it? Yeah. Don't ever complain or argue. And, of course, you know what Paul is doing. He's hearkening back to Deuteronomy 32. He said, these are, not the pe these are not the people with my marks. They don't have my marks. They don't have my spots, as it were. They don't have my markings on them. They are perverse. You know, they are perverse people. They're crooked people. They've turned aside from the right way. Right? In the Song of Moses, Moses said, I'm going to sing to you some good doctrine. You just should learn the Song of, of Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 32. I mean, here Paul now takes it and he puts it around and he, he says it in a different way. Hey, man, you know what? Let's just go look at that. Why don't we just go look at that? Let's just go over there and look at that. Hallelujah. Because you're here to be taught of the Word. You're here, you're here to be taught by the Holy Ghost. The Word of God, the Word of God will get you to a place where the Holy Spirit can take a, 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 and begin to use you. The Word of God will take you to a place of yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. He, that's what the Word of God will do for you. The Word of God will hook you up with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost can begin to make, to, to establish all the wonderful, good, and beautiful, and glorious things. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, after that, you, were, you know, you got something, you know, how many of you know you got something you're never supposed to have? How many of you don't know that you got something that you're never supposed to have? You and I weren't supposed to have the knowledge of good and evil. But the Holy Spirit's come here to teach us how to hate evil and to love the good. Hallelujah. He's teach, come here to teach us how to choose righteousness and hate iniquity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Only the Holy Ghost can show us. Only the Holy Spirit can teach us. And we've got to learn how to cooperate with Him. We've got to learn how to move with Him. You're not going to, you can't move with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, unless you're willing, unless you're willing to walk in truth. Unless that's what you want more than anything else. People, the Lord puts within our hearts a great hunger and desperation to walk in truth. The Lord works within our life an understanding of how to yield to the Holy Spirit and let Him take control. Instead of trying to manage our own lives. Trying to provide for ourselves. The Lord has nothing against us being blessed. But what happens is people get so focused on providing for themselves. They get so focused on being successful in this world because they're empty inside. God's people, many of God's people, have big, gigantic holes on the inside of them because they're not being filled with the Spirit. They're empty. There's only one way that God has purposed for us to walk. He said to the woman at the well, God's mercy extends to everyone. His grace is, His grace is unmeasurable. And within this, people really wrestle the Scripture to their own destruction. They think that God's grace is a means of provision for you to continue on as an adulterer. No, it isn't. God's grace and mercy is a means to deliver you out of being an adulterer. So he says to the adulteress who had been married five times and was living with a man who was not her husband. Hmm. And there's absolutely, I mean, that, that really, if you understand the whole context of Judaism and, and, and the concept of, of morality within the framework of the day of Jesus, that would have been the worst kind of woman on the face of the earth. This is, this is it. But he says to her, I've got a gift for you. And if you take this gift, if you'll receive this gift. See, there's an anointing here right now. It's like water to drink. It's like water to drink. So I said, oh, well, Jesus here. Give me some water to drink. Then out of me, I have a wellspring springing up on the inside of me and a river flowing out. He's here. He's here. 
And then the beautiful thing of it is when you all of a sudden realize that the Holy Ghost is both with you and in you, you're carrying around the river all the time. The bubble up is always there. The big problem is, is that we're doing our own thing and not his thing, and therefore we're never connecting with him. We're doing our own thing and not his thing. What happens if all of a sudden we begin to walk at, in a principle that says, I don't do anything else except what God says. So let's go over to, what if you do that? What if you were to do that? I don't do anything else with God. I don't belong to myself. I've been bought with a price. I'm a slave to, the, I'm a slave to obedience. I want, li I, I want life with only life in it. Listen to me. I want life with only life in it. And if you could really measure that, if you could really know that, you'd say, of course, I only want life with life in it. I don't want life with any death in it. Romans 6, 16 lays it out. You either walk in in obedience or you walk in in sin. There's a spirit of disobedience that works in the children of disobedience that is supplied by the God of this world. There's a spirit of obedience that works in the children that have, uh, of God who have been redeemed. And that spirit of obedience works in our lives by the Holy Ghost, which he's given to us. He's given us a new heart so that we can receive the things of God. Praise God. So you can be taught of God. Hallelujah. You can be taught of God. What is God teaching you? You don't need any man. There's something that God, the Holy Ghost, is teaching you that you don't need anybody to teach you. What is that? That you're supposed to dwell continually in Jesus Christ. That you're supposed to abide in him. Hallelujah. That you're supposed, that, that's baptized, I'm telling you right now. That is baptized. That is totally immersed. One day, I was sitting in, some preach, in, in, a, in a conference and Preacher turned to me, she, you know, she just kind of nudged me, said, he said, Pastor, he says, what does it really mean in the scripture to be baptized? I said, well, there was a, in the second century B.C., there was a, a doctor, Nicander, and he uh, described a recipe for uh, pickling cucumbers. And it was there that he used those words which are, were used by the Lord Jesus, that was used by John, that was used by Matthew, that was used by uh, Luke, that was used by Mark and Peter, hallelujah, to be pickled, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> to be immersed, and you still, you don't take the pickles out of the, out of the baptism until you're ready to, have, to, to <laughs> utilize them, to eat them, to devour them, <laughs> you know, is that the pickles, oh, I'll let my pickles set out for a couple of weeks. No, you leave them there, baptized. God's got us. Then see, this is where we're at. We immersed under, we immersed in the cloud. We all baptized in the glory of his miracle. A greater miracle than the parting of the Red Sea. Ha <laughs> ha. We all ba baptize and, uh, 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 and walk in a glory that's far greater than, than, than the, ta literally, than the tabernacling of God in the midst of the fiery cloud. That then ultimately had the miracle of manna. Oh, because God didn't give them the true manna. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Anybody eat this bread shall live forever. Hallelujah. You have eternal life. If you eat this, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, then you have eternal life. You have eternal life. And he then goes on to describe eating his flesh and drinking his blood means to dwell in him. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is teaching us where we're supposed to be if we're going to walk this life. We get off in all of our other responsibilities, and we then abdicate the most important responsibility. God wants to teach us to walk in obedience, perfect obedience. Praise God for the new heart so we can learn. Praise God for the new, and yield. Praise God for the new spirit so that we can learn and that we can yield. So that our spirit now can be united together with God, the Holy Spirit, who is also given to us. Hallelujah. And that our heart then can be taught of God because we got a pure heart, not a defiled heart. Yes. Pure conscience, not a defiled conscience. Listen, boldness and confidence and assurance are just as important fruits of the Spirit as love, joy, and peace. They really are. They really are because you're not going to be able to move in the things that God has for you and receive the things that Father has for you without a boldness and a confidence and assurance of His love and His commitment and His will for our lives. Huh? So are you there in Philippians? I'm trying to get there. I'm having troubles turning to the place, turning to the page. Somebody said, how many points do you have in your sermon? As many points as it takes. I have points until I run out of them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, I can't keep up with it. Oh, yeah, you can. Just relax your brain. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just re relax your mind. I tell you right now, God, speak into your spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak to your intellect. Bodhisaya. Iramangatahai. The whole of us. Rene. Spedene. Prostito. Hallelujah. Speak of Right into the things that only the Holy Ghost can teach you. 
the things, that, the things of heaven, the things that you have no practical experience to understand, really. You've got to be taught of God. Hallelujah. You've got to learn from Him. The Holy Ghost. Philippians chapter 1, chapter 2. Fura basteya. Powerful chapter, huh? So the Lord says, For it is God that works in you both the will and do of His good pleasure. Everybody say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if God's at work and you letting Him work, He's getting the job done. A guy came to me one time and said, I'm not sure if I'm letting God do it or if I'm doing it. I said, Well, I said, Are you being successful? He said, No. I said, That's you. Because God's always successful. Hallelujah. So I said, why do I need to learn how to walk in lowliness and meekness? My goodness, don't you realize all the people around me when trying to abuse me, take advantage of me, control me? It's not about your interaction with men. It's about your interaction with the Father. It's about your interaction with the Lord Jesus. You get, you want to try to get their relationship right with one another. You're never going to get your relationship right with one another. You get your relationship right with God, and then it will automatically, by default, be right with everybody else. <laughs> then you'll have a proof. All, all your love for the brethren is a proof that the love with, between you and Father is established, that there is a connection. You're never going to bring unity and peace in your own home. You're not going to have unity and peace with yourself. You yourself, <laughs> <laughs> you yourself and you can't get along. <laughs> Me, myself, and I can't get along. Ah, cicada. How are you going to get along with somebody else? You're constantly beating yourself up. Ah, I'm just telling you. Ah, condemn yourself. Sitting there talking to yourself at night, can't even sleep because you just, you don't meet up to your standards. Give us a break. Listen, it's unity and peace that comes to us as a, as a relationship. Unity and peace is all about relationship. You understand that? Unity and peace is all about relationship. Huh? The Salamim offering is all about relationship. Just sit down. Come over here and sit down and eat with me. Huh? Hallelujah. You wake up in the morning. Father says, come, let's have breakfast. Hallelujah. 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 It's wonderful to have breakfast with the Holy Ghost, with the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's wonderful to have lunch. Hallelujah. Karasteya. With Huraman Dekeya. Perasitalamon Sabaya. Hallelujah. The great God Almighty. Hallelujah. Ananesheyapa. El Shaddai. Hallelujah. Likasi Pereneyatu. Look, I'm not, this isn't fantastic all. This is reality. This is what the Word of God describes. Listen, faith doesn't just come by hearing the Word. Faith is also supplied by the Holy Ghost. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. And the gift of faith even is also that, uh, that much more underlined that's coming from the Holy Ghost. See, the Word of God was preached to Israel. It did not profit them. The Word of God can be preached to people and it not profit them. It not change anything about their life. It not bring the blessings and the miracle provision which God has demanded. God's demanded it. He's commanded it. <laughs> but He's not going to change. He's not going to force our will. He's going to say, he's going to warn us. He's going to teach us. He's going to instruct us. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. But he's not going to force us. We've got to, we've got to be willing to say, no, I'm not pursuing my own life anymore. I'm going to learn how to do it your way, Lord. I'm going to learn how to be strengthened by the Spirit in my inner being. Somebody said, why can I pray for you? Here's why you can pray for me. You pray that God strengthen me by his Spirit in my inner being. being and I'll do everything just fine from there on out. I'm, I'm good. All I need is understand how to move and function, flow in, and allow the, a strengthening power, the mighty power of the Holy Ghost to have free course in my life. I mean, I, I'll, do greater, I'll do far greater feats than, than Samson when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, than Jephthah. Than, I, I'll do far greater feats than Joshua who commanded the, the moon and the sun to stand still. Huh? We'll see people's hearts transformed. We'll see people ripped from the jaws of hell. The miracle of salvation is a greater miracle than commanding the sun and the moon to stand still. And the reality of it is, is there seems to be very, very little true conversion to be converted, to be transformed. There seems to be, there seems to be it's very little conversion that results in what we would see back in what we called the apostolic holiness movement in the late 1800s. He was ah they they were they weren't they, their doctrine wasn't good. A. B. Simpson's doctrine was good. A. B. Simpson had good doctrine. He didn't understand. He didn't understand the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He was 
you know, in his, there was traditions that blinded the eyes. The Word of God will enlighten your eyes, even though traditions will blind your eyes. Pentecost, the Holiness Movement. I mean, what, what was going on with Brzee? And unfortunately, Brzee and, and, the, and, and, and his elders and groups, group that was around him, they blew it in the Pentecostal, uh, the Pentecostal Church of the Nazarene. It became the Church of the Nazarene. They blew it. They had an opportunity. They're crying out to God. They're crying out. They, 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 their whole theme was to, to cry out to God and pray for the glory to come. And, and, and stay after it till the glory comes. And then when the glory comes, stand in the glory. I mean, they were the howlers. The noisy rings. They, the, you know, apostolic holiness movement. And then they started persecuting what God did at Azusa Street. Because they were just right down the road. It was a lot of things. A lot of breaking away. And then what we've seen is we watched as the Pentecostal movement begin to slip away. And begin to, begin to incorporate within the movement a whole lot of allowance for sin and iniquity. And say that the grace of God would take care of it. And so everybody's laying aside the way of sin, which, huh? The way and the sin which so easily besets them. And so men will give you the opportunity to lay aside the weight. But you can't get it done in a lifetime. Right? Religion gives you the opportunity to lay aside the, 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 the sin. And the weight that would beset you, right? Did I, did I quote it right that time? Thank you. But you never can get it done. I mean, I'm people I heard many years ago saying, oh, well, we're laying aside the, the sin and the weight. So we may run the race with joy. When are you going to start running, man? Because you're going to run with chains on. They're still trying to lay it aside. There's not an understanding of going on into maturity. It's always to continue relaying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, doctrine of baptism, judgment. I mean, come on. It's just, it's time to just go in and say, wait a minute. The Lord has given us an opportunity to go on to maturity. People get all locked up in semantics. Oh, and they start talking about, well, Wesley is saying, you thought you saying what John Wesley said about Christian perfection. Uh, no, maturity. You're born as a newborn babe in Christ Jesus. And now you're given the privilege and the ability to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And the call is to come into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus unto a fully matured man. I mean, teleos should be translated maturity, especially in this context. Because it's all the allegory is a, is a child being born and growing into a full adult. And I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write, I write unto you, young men, because you're strong. The word of God abides in you and you have defeated Satan at every point. How many of those that we have here? Good. I'm glad to see you testify. Amen. I write unto you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. The Lord's talking about match, maturation every turn in the road. That we may grow up into him into all things. Who is the fullness. Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. In him is, is, is the full. He, he has the fullness of the, of the power of God being made manifest in him. Hallelujah. King James said Godhead. Power of God. Dwells in him. We're growing up into him in all things. And you know when you hear a verse of scripture like Jesus is talking. He's going after. I mean I just. You know. I'm about two years away now from completing the entire translation of the Bible. And uh, I'm going, I'm just doing revisions now. I, I stop, I, you know, I, 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 it's taking me so long because I'm doing commentary on every, uh, on every verse in the Bible. And, and I had to integrate it. And so then I decided, well, you know, I'm going to separate the two out because I'm not going to get it ten, done in 10 years. And I started eight years ago. So I got two, and now I've got it all laid out for two years. But I was... I was just kind of editing just because I really want accuracy and I want it, I want it accuracy and I want it to flow real smooth. So it's natural. It flows smooth. It's accurate. It's using more modern terminologies as well. And so I was just smoothing out, as it were, not smoothing out in a textual sense, but you know what I'm saying. Just making sure that everything is correct and, and reads right and whatnot and Matthew chapter 5. Matthew, and so I just posted it on my Facebook yesterday. Because it's such a strong sermon. Do you know how many people edit that sermon? Do, I, I wonder how many people faithfully give their selves to doing what Jesus ministered in, in Matthew chapter 5. And 
I'm going to tell you right now, I can show you Matthew chapter 5 in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And that's why you'll see there's two things I'm doing in my translation. Is I, I, I connect all the Old Testament scriptures with the things that are written in the New Testament. And also because there's never really been a good layman's edition of all of the various different words, alternative words that may exist in the 1500 manuscripts, 13,000 lectionaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm putting little notes in there so you can see the whole latitude of what possibly that verse could say if you consider even the most, you know, corrupt extant manuscripts. Okay? Um, I mean, I'm just doing this because I want, I want people to be without excuse. You need to be without excuse for God's love for you. <laughs> I mean, the Lord's purpose that you and I come to know the love of Jesus Christ. I mean, come on, people. <laughs> I mean, he, he, this is the most beautiful life that we can imagine. I mean, to, to walk in love. Somebody said, if I walk in this kind of love and I walk in this kind of meekness, we're going to be dead in a week. No. And people come to mess with you and the power of God will show up and fry them. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. There'll be signs and wonders and miracles. Somebody's, come on, somebody speak against you. They're going to be mute till they get healed. <laughs> I mean, come on. There is a power, there's a protective, jealous, protective love that God has for his people. When you stop taking care of yourself and defending yourself and doing it on your own, where God comes and shows up mighty on your behalf. God's looking for people to do mighty things through. These are the last days. And God said, those people who know the Lord, their Lord, who are strong in the last days, they're going to do exploits. It's something that needs to be burning in our spirit. The reality of God's presence, that he's not in a place some far, far away land called heaven heaven he's here hallelujah you don't need to rent the heavens he ain't a prisoner hallelujah i don't need to say oh god come let your river flow out of me he say no you let my river flow out of you we need to get it right we need to start responding in faith and obedience and, and speaking out of our mouth the reality of what his word describes to believe his word and then allow the holy spirit to inject us, feel us, overwhelm us with his faith. You know where the love is going to come from? The Father has for you an immeasurable love that is only defined within the framework of Father's love, divine love. It comes from the Holy Ghost. He pours, he pours his love in us. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi. And it makes all our experiences good. Hallelujah. <laughs> He comes, pours his joy in us, his peace in us. We don't try to make it up and have it ourselves. It's not a bootstrap, strap, bootstrap salvation. It, it, it is a relationship salvation. It's where we literally have a relationship. The Holy Ghost is there and we say, Holy Spirit, I, I'm not feeling love right now. Please fill me with your love. And he fills us to be continually filled. People have got a wrong concept of what does it mean to be continually filled. Why do we, why don't why can't we concentrate? Why, why do we re forget the last verse we just read? Huh? Why don't we understand when it means, what it means to be filled continually with the Spirit, to have the provision of all God's character and all God's demeanor and all these wonderful things that pertain to life and godliness. Everybody's without excuse. Father's given us everything that we need to pertain to life and godliness. Godliness. He's called us to glory and virtue. I mean, the glory, hallelujah. The glory and excellence of character. That word virtue is actually excellence of character. Hallelujah. You're going to have to get yourself a bit in your mouth. You're going to have to get yourself a bit in your mouth. Amen. If you're muley, you're going to have to get yourself a bit, a bit. Are you listening to me? You can't get yourself, huh? I would just say, let God, the Holy Ghost, come rule over you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm about to tell you. Just let Jesus Christ be ruler. Huh? It's time people quit get at, people got to get, they're buried in semantics. Jesus is Lord. Well, is he your sovereign ruler? Are you his slave? Huh. Are you his bond servant? Here, I'll, let me dilute it a little bit. Are you his bond servant? Oh, let me dilute it a little bit more. Make it more palatable. Are you his servant? Huh. Huh. Oh, let me dilute it a little bit more. Make it a little more. Do you believe in Jesus? Because they all the same thing. But people can get a concept, oh, I believe in Jesus, but they not. he's not the sovereign ruler. He's not Lord. That's what, sovereign, that's what Lord means, sovereign ruler. I mean, you're ruler. Lord, in context with Christ Jesus, sovereign ruler. Amen. Master. Kambote. I don't do anything. I'm his. I belong to him. He's got the bill of sale for me. 
He's got, he's got my purchase. I'm his purchase possession. Huh? He's bought me with the price. He's got the receipt per purchase. He's got the proof of purchase. And he's given to us a guarantee concerning his inheritance in us. Ooh. Ooh. I want to learn about him. I want to know this God who loves so much. I want to know this God who spared no expense. He loved, he wanted so, so desperate, trembling to have a relationship with me, he spared no expense, but offered up his son, spared not his own son. Offered him up for my sin. How much more shall you now freely give me all things by him? It's time you start getting it for yourself. It's time you learn how to be a God-made person instead of a self-made person. And there's a chasm between the two. And we need to get it defined. And one of the places that it gets radically defined is it gets radically defined in Matthew chapter 5. And what does the Lord say in 548? This is one of the most abused verses of Scripture in the Bible. You ready? Matthew 548. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Stop. Make no mistake on what God was saying there. Because now you cannot make teleos mature. You can't make it mature because God's already mature. Father's already matured. You ain't got to grow no more. But in the... So I said, how can you even say that? Because the ancient of days lives within me. Because the spirit, the eternal spirit... The eternal spirit rules my heart and mind. Whoa. Really? You know what? You're going to have, you, there's going to be a different kind of conduct in your life, a different kind of behavior. The biggest thing is we're stuck in self and are not willing to have the first movements with God to deny ourselves. Oh, we want to die. You're not going to die. You already did. You got to die to get to deny. I'm going to say it again. You got to die to get to deny. You got to die, be crucified with Christ, buried with him by baptism into his death, raised up together with him, alive together, and seated with him in the heavenly realm. Because that's the creed of the church. And that is a false creed. That's not a denominational creed. That is that which, which God the Holy Ghost testified through his servant, Paul. Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh, I'm dying. Well, then you not have a resurrection yet. Because you got to die until you never... If you have a resurrection, you've got to die. And if you, then if you be raised together with Christ, where your affection is going to be? It's not going to be on things of this earth. And we're not talking about the world. Uh, Paul had a, a very clear understanding of, uh, of, and a demarcation and, and an expression doctrinally of what was of the world and what was, of the, what was earthly. And, and, and Satan runs his strategy and interference against the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, against the purposes of God, this life the Father has given us to live. And what happens? The world goes without the light of heaven. The Lord's purpose to make you shine like the stars of heaven. Yeah. He, he, he. Hallelujah. Here's what he's purposed to do. He's purposed to cause us really in him to have no distinction between himself and us. <gasps> yeah, because he's our redeemer and we're in him. And we don't really even exist outside of him. He's life and that's it. He's the door and that's it. Nobody comes to the Father but by him. And we come to the Father by him because he's in us and we're in him. Father, the glory that you gave to me, I've given it to them that we, they, can be, they can be together with us just like you and I are together. Just like you're in me and I'm in you, they're in, I'm in them and they're in me. Whoa. Jesus did the invitation to come dwell in me. How radically? You're going to be dwelling in me like, like a branch dwells in the vine. And if you dwell in me like a branch dwells in the vine, then you'll bring forth the fruit. And if you be in me like a branch that is in the vine, and you don't bring forth fruit, Pop's going to come cut you off. Uh oh. I'm mm, fear lest the promise being left to me to me of entering into his rest, I should come short of it. I'm past I'm gonna pass this time of my soul journey here in fear. Because God has said, You be holy just like I'm holy. You're kidding me. How am I supposed to do this? You no longer live. 
Christ Jesus who lives. Hallelujah. When is that going to be? That is the faith. That is the faith. People talk about, well, Paul's definition of faith was different than Peter's definition of faith. Nonsense. The faith is to be born again. That's the faith. That's to be made a new creation. That's the faith. Jesus introduced the faith. Then the only possible of the miracle of salvation to become a new creation is that you call upon the name of Jesus Christ who purchased our salvation by his own blood. Hallelujah. Who, 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 who died and was buried and rose again so that we might live in him. That's the faith. That's justification by faith. Justification by being born of God through the miracle of the Holy Ghost to come by direct result of the purchased price at Calvary, the blood of Jesus Christ. God's only begotten son who was born of a virgin, a descendant from the house of David in Bethlehem of Judea, according to the promise of God from the foundation or the overthrow of the earth. This is, no, we're going to have to get into it. Because I, sometimes I hear people, the louder mouth they have about false doctrine, they more up to their eyebrows in false doctrine than anybody else. They're trying to salve their own iniquity through the declaration of their words. Making the faith something other. Paul said, if anybody comes and preaches any other gospel to you, I say, let them be accursed. F Paul says, D don't believe these people who want to present another Jesus to you. Come on now. People, let's just grab a hold of this thing. It, it's not that difficult. Let's just get out of religion and get into relationship. Relationships is, I love you, Lord, and I want to know you. I want to know this. I want to know this one who loved me so much that he spared not his own son. I want to know, I want to know this one who's poured out his love upon me, who's given me everything I need to be successful, who continually lives to make intercession for me. Mm -mm. Job was an intercessor. Did you know that? God had one man. Uh, one day the Lord looked and said, there was no intercessor. Every man had turned to his own way. He said, oh, by my own right hand, I'm going to do it. By my own arm, I'm going to do it. Jesus, God, took upon himself the robes and likeness of sinful flesh. Huh? And condemned sin in the flesh. Condemned it. Put it to death. Huh? To put it to death. He who bore our sin in his own body on the tree. So that we now being dead, cut off from sin, might live unto righteousness by whose wound we were healed. And we just got to quit editing the Bible. I've discovered that people spot check the Bible. They've got little places where they go in the Bible. You need to start reading it from Genesis 1, 1 all the way to Revelation 22, 21. And keep reading it because that's how the Holy Ghost is going to reach up and slap you. <laughs> that's how he's going to reach up and correct you. That's why I was going to convict your heart. Not because you heard something on the radio or saw something on television. I don't even know if there's any conviction left. I mean, forgive me. I'm, I'm sure there is. The Lord can use anything that's got a little fragment of his word, I think. I'm not sure about that because the scripture doesn't say so. And I, and I get a check there because I know what Satan did in Genesis chapter 3. He used a fragment of the verses of scripture and misapplied them, and it was the downfall of men. It was the overthrow of men. Let's have the word of God like it is. Now, let's not only have the word of God like it is, but let's go ahead now and live it. And then when we say, wait a minute, I've got to live this? I've got to, you mean I've got to live this? You mean God expects me to be this way? Then you're going to be looking for some ability. Ha, 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 ha. He goes, yeah, wait a minute, I don't have any ability. Hallelujah, praise God. Revelation has come. It is a moment of breakthrough. Now God will give you ability. He will both will and do. Kul he will both, He will both will and, and give you the ability. Hallelujah. He will, give you, he will give you supernatural ability. You know, Jesus... And when he was born, he took on the robes of sinful flesh. He became just like you and I. Completely, Philippians chapter 2, early on, it says, it's, it's, it's the doctrine of the kenosis. He completely emptied himself. He laid aside all of his glory and became a man. He became a servant. Born with something that we know from Genesis chapter 1 men and 2, men weren't supposed to have. The knowledge of good and evil. And the scripture says he learned to choose the good and refuse the evil. Isn't that beautiful? It is a wonderful thing when you don't get into sin. It's much easier not to have to deal with the strong temptations of sin. Who's the tempter? 
Satan, he's called the tempter, not God. Hallelujah. God doesn't tempt. Hallelujah. He proves. He proves. And I know it's the same word, both in the Hebrew language and the Greek language. He proves. But there's, he allows these things. But, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, it's very, and, and I, don't, I don't want you to get lost in that statement because I know that people go into, get intellectual and go, wait, wait a minute, you're going to have to explain that to me. I can't, I'm not going to explain that right now, so forgive me for even bringing that up. But here he is learning to choose the good and refusing evil. He's learning, can, 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 come on, what? He's learning obedience. He's learning obedience. Are you willing to learn obedience? I mean, people, God has given us an ample amount of grace. He's given an unlimited amount of grace. He's given us unlimited amount of forgiveness and mercy to in every way be conformed to the image of the Son. All we've got to do is be committed and want this. All, all we, if you fall short, if you fail, you just go, wait a minute, Father, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Strengthen me. Help me. It's not just the Lord you know, it's just saying, Lord Jesus, cleanse me, wash me in your blood, but Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Help me to understand how to yield to you, how to let you rule, how to let you lead. Because I know you want to lead me and you want to guide me into all truth. I know you're here to teach me. Lord, help me to learn how to deny myself so that you can teach me how to deny myself and quit living for my own will. In other words, take up my cross. I'm not living my own life, my own designs, with my own career in mind, with my own earthly objectives. Wait a minute, I'm gonna live for the will of God. God's got a will for me. He's revealed, it's a revealed will. It's this wonderful mandate from heaven so that we live out our lives just like Jesus showed us as ambassadors of heaven, as ambassadors of God, going everywhere into all the world, declaring this liberty and this freedom from sickness and sin and disease. From all the power of death to give and to, to supply to men this life eternal that is only found in Christ Jesus. So God, help me to understand how to put my life right down into the context of what you've willed. And then in that, define what it means to take up my cross. Jesus wasn't, didn't come to, to, you know, to, to get married and have a family and have a career and you know, show all, everybody the, he divulges all the secrets of the world. He came here for one purpose, to die for men's sins to die for us to give to us his own life to impart to us his own life and then likewise the lord says to us look you're going to have to understand how to cease from sin cease from doing your own thing i'm gonna get to philippians here in a minute right now i'm gonna go back over here to because that that verse scripture just hit me real hard first peter four for as much then as christ has suffered for us in the flesh and this is, where I, this is where I take up the flesh, the flesh argument. Have you suffered in the flesh? Are you willing to suffer in the flesh? He learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Are you willing to learn obedience? Romans 6.16 makes it absolutely essential to learn obedience. You're either going to be serving, obe serving God through obedience, or you're going to be serving death through sin. The Lord says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I just hearken back to Philippians chapter 2. Who emptied himself and made himself of no reputation, but, but, but humbled himself and became a servant. And he humbled himself all the way even unto the death. What, well, who was he humbling himself before? Father. To do Father's will, to do it his way. To walk it out step by step with absolute consecration. To obeying what God said to do. No editing, no revising, no making it fit for my generation. Generation, no, may, no more making God's word conform to my own personal preference and interest. I hope you're getting as convicted as I am. I hope you're getting chart is, is stirred as I am, as I'm declaring these things. Father's just looking for some people who, with, with total res, resignation, would say, okay, Lord, I am going to learn what it means to say no to me and yes to you. Hallelujah. Say, God took Satan out of the equation, so to speak, so that he could not have any kind of rule or authority over us. He's given us, God the Holy Ghost lives in on the inside of us. That's why we have all strength. That's why we have all power and might. That's why we can be strong in strength of the Lord and the power of his might. 
to be able to deal with these things because God the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of us. If you're going to try to deal with Satan, you're going to be defeated. But if you let God the Holy Ghost arise, if you let him take control, if he let you let him do the leading, if you let him do the thinking, if you let him do the talking, if you let him do the feeling, if you let him do the acting, I'm telling you right now, Satan hasn't got a chance. He doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That is a crazy doctrine in modern times. It's a crazy doctrine. Cease from sin is a crazy doctrine. How can we live without it? How can you live in it? How can you live in it without Holy Ghost conviction and feeling torn apart and compromised and, 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 and huh? And conflicted and, 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 and uh, violated. I love the doctrine of John, you know, where he just makes it very clear. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, he that sins of the devil. This purpose of the Son of Man was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. And then he goes on. He would go, this is just out of reach. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How is it out of reach? How is it out of reach? When God has purposed to have a new heaven and a new earth wherein only dwells righteousness where there will be no more sin. How is it out of reach to imagine that he has purified himself of people zealous for good works? How is, it, how is it out of reach when his blood has washed away our sins completely, removed the power of sin from off of us? How is it out of reach when we look in the millennial reign of Christ Jesus and we see how God deals with sin and subdues nations, how he's a fuller soap and a refiner's fire, how he, was a raw, how he rules with a rod of iron and crushes everything opposed to the will and purposes of God so that the earth and the, and the heavens and everything that belongs to God's creation has no sin in it, no rebellion in it, no iniquity, no more, uh, no more interaction with demon spirits. Can we learn to commune and fellowship in the holies of the holies and understand a pleasure that is at the right hand of God that is greater than the pleasure that is found in sin? People, I'm going to tell you right now, there are th certain things, emotions, that you become addicted to. You endocr your, endocr your endocrine system, from it, just from a concept of the endocrinology of men, the in the physiology of men, you become addicted to fear. You can become addicted to fear. You, the stimulus that you get, the adrenaline, the, the, the whole cascade of, of hormonal events that happen in your body. Become addicted to that. They're every, and and, and you've got to watch out because unholy things will begin to work. You know, people are, look at people's appetites for move, movies. They're, I mean, I can't even imagine it. I'm just like, you know, you see some of these trailers or some of these commercials. You know, I, I, you know, I encourage people, don't have television. Just if you're gonna, you, know, you want entertainment, you want to watch movies, go, go buy a DVD or something. I mean, the television commercials are whacked completely out. People, you got to watch out. You're giving yourself to things that are, uh, that are eliciting unholy emotions that literally can create an addiction in your body. True. I know this is kind of hard stuff to understand. I'm not going to get into the physiology, the physiochemistry of it. I'll leave it. Okay? I do like to try to help people who know these kinds of things kind of conceptualize it from a different viewpoint. The reality of it is... You've got to watch out because it's even on another level. Because now there's a spiritual dimension to it where a demonic power is actually involved in the appetite as well. Well, what happens when you now have been freed from that, you've been cleansed from that, you've been washed from that, and praise God if you go back into it after having been born again, God's made a provision so that the new man, the new creation can remain intact and all that sin and all that iniquity be completely washed away. Isn't he amazing? Isn't his mercy amazing? But his blood was given to cleanse us from all sin. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ continues to cleanse us or cleanses us from all sin. But isn't there some conditions there? People got a concept about grace and about the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ that doesn't even exist biblically. It's not a biblical theology. It is a Christian philosophy. And we've got to reevaluate things in the Word of God. And we're, we're not going to be looking for excuses to do what's wrong when we're desperate to be, what, to be right. We're desperate to be right. We're passing the so time of our, we're passing the so time of our, 
uh, the, the time of our sojourning, rather, here in fear. I'm getting ready to stand before the judge. In fact, I'm standing before the judge right now. In fact, I'm a son, and I'm saying, oh, God, chasten me, because treat me like a son. Judge me now. But when you're chasing of the Lord, you're judged of the Lord so that you will not be. That's weak. Say it again. Condemned with the world. What's, the world, what's going to happen with the world? The world's condemned. The world is condemned. It's already judged. Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to give the world life, right? Why? Because the world was already condemned. And then Jesus didn't even come to condemn. The world's already been condemned. That's why friendship with the world. Come on, people. You ought to watch out. You get on your knees and pray, oh, God, I want your anointing. I want your glory. I want your power. I want to do your will. I want to walk in your ways. And then go back and fellowship with the world. People, you're compromising the thing. I just I want to read this next verse of scripture here. That he or you should he no longer should live the rest of the time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the nations when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, banqueting, abominable things, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them. And to the same excess of writing, speaking evil of you. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? There's a big, there's a big contrast. Are you going to live for your own desire or the desire of men? You've got to put yourself in the category of desire of men. Are you going to live for the desires of men? Or are you going to live for the will of God? If you're going to live for the will of God, you're going to deny yourself. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this again. If you're going to live with the will of God, you're going to deny yourself and you're going to take up your cross or you're going, to, you're going to take a hold of the assignment that God has given you to live out your life according to what He has defined and not what you've defined. To offer yourself up a sacrifice. You say, I don't want to talk, I want to talk about no sacrifice. I want to talk how to get rich. I want to talk how to be, you know, uh, how, you know, to have, live in more pleasure and less need huh? the Lord says the Lord has said to us to offer ourselves up a living sacrifice holy and, holy and acceptable so if you don't believe yourself holy well I somebody said uh, you know I was in church meetings growing up in my life and the person would come in and say if you know any you know is, you know basically is there anybody in the place holy? And it's almost like an insult. If you raise your hand, you know, you'd be like ostracized. You know. I'm holy. He made me holy. He gave me his Holy Spirit. He made me holy. I'm consecrated to him. Sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Made holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. Made holy by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm made blameless and pure. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. He's given me the gift of holiness, His holiness. He's given me the gift of righteousness, His righteousness, not self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is to self-justify. This is where a lot of people get caught up editing the Word of God. They self-justify. Oh, I, I'm okay. I know I'm right. Do you know you're right? You better examine yourself, see if you're right. You better examine yourself, see if you're in Christ. See if you're doing what Father, see if you're walking in obedience. And then where you see that you're not walking in obedience or you're not living your life in Christ Jesus, then all you do is you don't feel like a failure and give up. You just simply say, Father, forgive me. I, I can see in my life where I've done many things wrong. I can't go back and change that. What I can do is I can resolve not to repeat it. I can resolve myself to coming under the rule and reign of the one who will keep me and strengthen me and give me the ability to not repeat the things of the past to say to the Lord I am committed to doing your way I'm going to live in your kingdom I'm going to tell you right now people there's not going to be any sin in God's kingdom how can people be addicted to sin and ultimately then step over into the kingdom of God and participate with what God's doing there's no sanctification in the sepulcher sanctification is now Sanctification is to be made holy. It's not a process of being made holy. You're instantaneously made holy through the new creation. 
God given to us righteousness and true holiness. That's what he said. That's, what, that's the doctor of Paul. He said, think different about yourself. Because until you start thinking differently, you're never going to act differently. Until you start thinking differently. So, it, so it's not just be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Come on, it's think different about yourself now. In light and view of all these things. Because you're cre recreated in the image of God. He's recreated you after his own image and likeness and righteousness and true holiness. This is who you are. Be don't, don't be conformed to this world, but be transfigured. Transfigured, not just transformed. You're not going from a, a caterpillar to a butterfly. Transfigured, because the word is, uh, has its meaning in the transfiguration. The word does not find its meaning in a, in, a, in a caterpillar going to a butterfly. The word finds its meaning in the mount of transfiguration. Be transfigured by, the thinking, by thinking different. We just want to be transfigured. Or, um, we want to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, and we don't know what that is at all. Well, why am I going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind? <laughs> how do you practically do, how do you put that into practice in your life? Huh? You can literally be, tra I know how to be transfigured. All I start doing is thinking about what God has done for me and what he's made me and what he's provided for me and the grace that is supplied to me and how much he loves me and the power of the Holy Ghost that is available to me. I get just transfigured. I, I, go from, I, go from, I go from doubt to faith. I go from darkness to light. I go from sadness to joy. I go from unrighteousness to righteousness. I go from unworthy to worthy. Amen. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Listen, the church is for you to be taught the word of God, to be rigorous, rigorously disciplined in obedience to Christ Jesus. Not to be, I'm not, this isn't a slap happy time, make you feel good about yourself. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about making you feel only good about the fact that you allow in Christ Jesus to live in you. And everything about yourself is like, is not, I, I don't want it. To hate your, I, my job is to make you or help you or assist you in hating your life in this world. I hope that's motivational enough for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you got a glimpse of heaven. You got a glimpse of your life in glory. And it's like, whoa, I don't want this. That's a pig pen. Look it over here. I've been invited to come sit at the table with the mighty. Uh -huh. I've been dressed up with a crown of righteousness. I've been given white raiment, which is the righteousness of the saints. I've been given the royal robe of divine glory. I've been given a scepter of rulership in his judgments and righteousness. Give me a break. I don't want no life in this world. It's a lot of times it's people going trying to sell everything that they have to obtain a pearl of great price, and they never seen a pearl. They're going to go try to sell everything they have that they may obtain a field that has a treasure and they never saw the treasure. God wants to show you the treasure. God wants to, God is earnestly pleading with his servants to rise up and begin to shine. So a contrast can be made between religion and relationship with him. Huh? I was talking to an engineer one day, and I said, I was just talking to him about things of the Lord. And I knew that he was well-versed in the Scripture. He said, listen, Mark, I know you're a pastor and you're a preacher. This is in the context of biotech. He said, but I'm going to tell you right now. I've watched you guys. And I'm going to tell you, you know different from the rest of us. You act the same, you do the same things, you're involved in the same things. And the things that, that you're describing to me about this new heart and this new spirit, being born again, being made a new creation, being made one with God, it's all nonsense. Because you guys don't live it. I didn't say anything. I just went home and wept. Because it's true. People passing by the vineyard. They don't see it at a time of grapes. They see it at a time of winter when it's barren and lifeless, and dried up. And the only thing that's going to make the difference is because you and I are stirred for his righteous cause. Suddenly we go, wait a minute, man. I'm, I, I'm counting all the rest of this nonsense as dung. I've had an encounter with the king of glory. 
I've had, I've, been, I've had an, an encounter with the Lord of life. I've had an encounter with the one who, who gave up everything, who, who, who at his expense, at his own expense, paid the full price of mankind's redemption. I'm not going to play around with this thing no more. I'm going to no longer live. Listen, the reality of it is to grab a hold of it, I'm going to no longer live. And Father, you begin to talk to Father this way, you know. And you grab a hold of His will and His plan for your life. And He hears you say, I'm going to no longer live. It's just going to be about you. That's what, this is all I want. I'm going tell you right now, you're going to have an encounter. You're going to have a Pentecostal, true, Holy Ghost fire, greater than the fire that set down upon, upon Mount Sinai, come upon you. You're going to have a stirring of God in your life that you're going to say, wow, this is like a river. Wow. Niagara Falls isn't too impressive right now. I saw a picture of it. It's like frozen. I'm thinking, oh, God. I pray that that doesn't look like us. I pray, Father, this, is this what we look like? Is this what I look like, Father? Pops, what, what do I need to do? And he gets, he gets, his real, gets real simple with us. Take heed unto my word. The word manifests Christ Jesus. The word written and declared that when the eternal word who was made flesh stood among us, all he did was declare the word. Hallelujah. Now, as usual, I'm about to stop. And I'm going to finally get to my, verse of, my opening verse of scripture. I... I, but you know the thing about it is I have no apologies. I'm just gonna bust the care today. She put on a medity. La Boca Davra Manda de Sabia Telama Doka Sapatea. Hallelujah. I don't understand a word of what I just said, but I felt every bit of it. Cada bust the pretty day. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Pam Bangele Pea. It is Ciprona. And it brings me into a place of yieldedness. It teaches my mouth to speak different, my heart to feel different, my mind to think different. I love the word of knowledge. I want you to learn how to walk in the word of knowledge. Where's Margaret? She would live at. Did she leave? I walked into her house the other day. I said, her eyes were all swollen up, you know. Her eyes were red. I just walked into her house and said, your eyes are red and, and they're all swollen up because of the wood that you're burning. I love the word of knowledge, you know. Because somebody said, well, what did you pray for me? Well, I went over. I went over. I just put my hands on her, on her eyes like that. I said, oh, it's the wood you're burning. Huh? It took her like two or three weeks to quit burning the wood. And as soon as she quit burning the wood, her eyes weren't red and, her, and, and weren't swollen. Oh, it would be wonderful. It could just be just a little teeny bit more sensitive to the word of knowledge without having somebody having to flare up their nostrils and say, Thus saith the Lord. Because <laughs> God, God the Holy Ghost doesn't come talk to us like that. He gently speaks. He gently, it's a still small voice. Is he in the earthquake? Yeah, he is. He's the one who did it. Is he in the wind that explodes rock? Yeah. But that's not where he's speaking. That's not where he's speaking. Everybody's hearing him speaking in the earthquake, hearing him speaking in the strong wind. In the consuming fire. Still small. Come. Come to me. Are you weary and heavy laden? Come. Come. I'll heal you. Come. I'll give you rest. Come to me. Come up to me. Come sit here with me. I'm staying with him. I'm going out no more. I'm with him. I am with him. Don't touch me. I'm with him. I've gone into some high security places with some, you know, you know, some dignitaries. And I see those, you know, secret service people coming at me and they come in with that look in their eye like they're going to kill me or something. I'm with him. <laughs> Grab a hold of the person, get him to turn my way. Hey. That's Jesus. Stop right there. <laughs> Death, sickness, disease, defeat, pain, sorrow. Stop right there. Death shall have no hold on me. My uncle Virgil wrote this wonderful song before, shortly before he died. He said, wrote the song. Sickness hath no hold on me. He's a great organ player. He can make an organ stand up and dance around, fly around the room. Sickness has no hold on me. 
I'm seated in heavenly places. I crushed his head at Calvary. I'm seated in heavenly places. Sin, it has no hold on me. I'm seated in heavenly places. I bruised his head at Calvary. I'm seated in heavenly places. Living word transforming me. I'm seated in heavenly places. Sons of God to maturity. I'm seated in heavenly places. Oh, I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm seated in heavenly. Heavenly, heavenly. Ha, I'm seated in heavenly places. Oh, crucified. Thanks God for the men of God. Thank God for Pentecost. Thank God for the doctrine of God and for the men and the women who lived it faithfully, ardently. Stalwarts of the, in, in the doctrines of God in their generation. <laughs> oh, let, let, let us realize, dear people, that it, it's right now on us. It's right now on us. Are, are we going to be a distinct difference? Are we going to shine as light to the world? Are, are, the, are men going to look at us and say, look at that, there's something different there. Look at that beauty. Look at that resolve. Look at that light. Look at that demeanor. Look at their, look at their disposition. Look at their way of living. Philippians chapter 2. Do all things without complaining or arguing. That'd be huge. I figured that would actually right almost make heaven on earth right there. I, 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 I bet that about 90 cents, of heaven, 90% of heaven, heaven on earth right there. If all of, hallelujah, of all the complaining and arguments came to an end. That you may be blameless and pure. These are two words, two Old Testament words that denote whether or not a sacrifice could be offered to God. It has to be tamim. It has to be without blemish. It has to be perfect. It has to be the right age and of the right kind. That you may live your lives, that you may be blameless, spotless, and pure. I have no idea why King James translated it harmless. I've tried to figure that out and can't. Uh, there's just, there's hard, it's hard to justify. I guess it was just a little bit too hard of a word for me. And the doctrinal ideologies. Blameless and pure, the sons of God. Wow. Beloved, oh, what love the Father has bestowed upon us that you and I should be called the sons of God. Ha, huh. oh, what love the Father has bestowed upon us. Oh, what love. Could, could, we, could we run the risk of having been given such a royal opportunity, such a divine opportunity, and cast it away or put it on the shelf and not valued it and made it meaningless compared to our food and to our clothing and to our reputation and to our other interests and pursuits and left off the greatest opportunity that could have ever been afforded to God's creation. Oh, what love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Beloved, now are you the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what you shall be. But we know that when we shall appear before him, we will see him as he is. For we shall be like him. Oh, what love. Oh, what amazing. I mean, you almost got to put your hand over your mouth to even say that. What? We shall see him as he is. We should be like him. What? We should judge angels with him. Angels who never sin, never transgress. I mean, I don't even understand it. All I know is that I get to walk in a love relationship with him right now, that he's made a way to where I'm holy and acceptable unto him. And I'm just really excited about that, where he's filled me with every good thing that he has, all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's called me into a place, given me a responsibility, and it's time that you and I start measuring up to the responsibility and the respect of simply saying, I'm going to be servant, you're going to be master. I'm going to be slave, and you're going to be ruler. I'm going to be your people, and you're going to be my God. <laughs> I'm going to be servant, and you're going to be Lord. <laughs> here he says, this is, what, this is our responsibility. You walk out of here today. This is your responsibility. Not how quickly you, you know, get served at the restaurant. I mean, the Lord just may prove you and just have them come wait on you last. 
And it, oh, he designed the whole thing just to see what was in you. Just see how you're going to behave because you're crying out, oh, God, use me. Okay, well, let me see if I can prepare you unto every good work. Let me see how much you're going to deny yourself and submit your attitudes and your emotions and your passions unto me. Let me rule your passions. Let me rule your emotions. Out of your kolia shall spring forth the expressions of the Holy Ghost. Kolia is an ancient Attic Greek word that is used for emotions, passions. God, the Holy Ghost, wants to spring forth out of our emotions and out of our passions. That doesn't fit at all with Gnostic doctrine, which seized the church in the third and the fourth century. But it fits perfectly with who God is, who rejoices over us and causes us to an excessive, exceeding joy more than 700 times in the Bible. But for the Gnostics, your emotions and your passions, well, they were made by the demiurge, which are demigods of the, of, of the, of the fallen realms of darkness. And in, infiltrates so much of God's people's understanding where they're editing out the Word of God and making it different than what it is. God stir you up with holy emotions. You tell me joy is not an emotion. You tell me excessive joy, exceeding joy, joy unspeakable, it's an emotion. You tell me love's not a passion. Come on, come on, baby. Hallelujah. <laughs> 28 and a half years and we're just starting to catch up with the idea that's beautiful. If she gets out of bed, I could be in a full on out of just <laughs> out of my, <laughs> 20. I said 29 and a half years. I? Said 28 I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be in a coma. If she gets out of bed, I know it. I'm waking up. Just tied. It's beautiful to be just tied together in a relationship. Just our lives merged. People opt out on the love. They opt out on the relationship. They opt out. They allow the complications and the issues and the challenges to ruin everything. Instead of being dedicated to covenant. Dedicated to the covenant of love. Chesed. A covenant of loving kindness. Here's the Lord. He calls to you and me and he says this. He says, be blameless and pure, the sons of God, without need for correction. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain nor labored in vain. Paul's basically underscoring: if you don't do these things, then all my work, all my work, and all my time spent with you in bringing you into the kingdom of God was meaningless. So we just looked at the Holy Spirit to just have control over our life. We give ourselves to having everything that he's provided, having our lamps filled. Hallelujah. And extra to, but, to boot. And just living in this glory. Hallelujah. We have our light lamps, our lights burning. Amen. Our lamps burning. And our belts on. Our coats and our belts on. Our lamps are burning. And we, we, we dressed. We're not in our pajamas. We dressed and we ready to go. That at whatever time our master calls, we may respond. Not only in the end, but on, the, on today. Today when you leave out of here. Today when you walk out of here. You don't know who's going to, you know, you're going to encounter at the gas station, at the store, at the restaurant. But I know one thing. When you and I allow God the Holy Spirit to begin to inspire us and impress upon us 
the things that he desires to say to people around us, it begins to shake their life and transform lives. Light, the light of heaven begins to sign, shine. An encounter with God begins to become real. What happens when you and I begin to do that on a daily basis? We then begin to participate with what it means to go into all the world. Not in an imaginary way, but in a real and a practical way. We begin to participate what it means to hold forth the word of life or to preach the gospel to every creature. And it just starts right in the, in the realms of, I'm not going to work, I'm going to ministry. I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to be what God's called me to be in a dark place. I'm going to be what God's called me to be in the workplace, in the play place, in every place. And, it, you know, and it's just, just being filled with his love and filled with his joy and filled with his goodness and filled with what everybody really wants. And when they see it, they go, my goodness, where did you, what, have you, what happened to you? You just, did you fall in love? What happened to you? What, what did, you win the, did you win the lotto or something? What, did you win the you know, king of the world for a day or something? Whatever it is people think. You have an, opp you have an opportunity to tell people about Jesus in a very meaningful way. Hallelujah. Well, everybody, would you just stand with me here? Just lift your hands towards heaven. Say, Lord, Lord, Lord take, my life take my life and let it be, let it be consecrated, consecrated, Lord, to thee. Lord, to thee. Take my moment. And my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart. It is thine own. It shall be your royal throne. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know that here in this place right now, every one of you at some point in time have made a decision to walk with the Lord Jesus. There's, there are a number of people in here that the Lord has made me keenly aware of that you don't live a consecrated life to the Lord. You don't live a life for Him. You live a life for you. It's not God that excites you. It's the things of this earth that excites you. It's, a, it's money that excites you. It's your security that excites you. You live too much of your life just doing your own thing. And out of that, you don't, you've never found the life of the overcomer. I mean, listen to me. What God has for you is the life of the overcomer. Jesus said, he that overcomes, even as I overcame, sit down, when it was sit down with me in my throne, even as I sat down with my father in his throne. There's nobody, that, there's no one that can change this or do this for you. You have to be willing You have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to do this. You have to be willing to begin to think different. Huh. Let God, the Holy Spirit, touch you right now. Just re all you've got to do is respond to me. All you have to do is just simply say, I'm not going to live my life. Listen, listen, you listen to me. Hell is a real place. Jesus made it like this in Matthew chapter 5. He's made it like this. You listen to me. He said... In the context of sin and, and making, it, making it more exceedingly sinful in the, in, in the new covenant than it is in the old covenant. When he said, the ancients said that if you com thou shalt not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you've done it in your heart. And so he's saying, it's now on another level. He said, therefore, if your eye causes you to stumble, the scandal on, pluck it out. Because it's profitable for you that you enter into life absent of one member than your whole body being cast into hell. That's how radical he is about it. There, there is no smoothing it over there. 
There's no making it, well, you know, it's not really that bad. God knows we're going to sin more or less every day. Listen, that is such a false doctrine that you better have a bunch of scriptures to back that up. And you're not going to find one. You're going to have to go to Romans chapter 7 and you're going to have to take it completely out of context from that which is established there in the chapter itself and is established in the two chapters that it's sandwiched in between. There's so much Bible on this issue. Adam sinned by simply disobeying God on something that doesn't even look that bad or that immoral. And he died forever. And the consequences of his sin is measurable by all. The Lord's radical about it. That's why Peter said, Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Because he who has called you is holy demands, really, commands that you be holy also. For it is written, I am holy. Be holy, therefore, because I also am I'm holy. So Jesus says, if your foot causes you to stumble, takes you someplace you're not supposed to go, cut it off. When you get that serious about it, somebody said, well, it's just a hyperbole. It's Hebrew, Hebrew, <coughs> Hebrewism idiom to be able to make a point. Well, fine, whatever you want to say. But let the point be made. The point is you don't allow it. Don't have it. Don't have place of it. Don't have it in your heart. So I said, well, I just believe if you saved, then you always saved. Well, then you're up against a whole bunch of Bible, beginning with Adam, because he was saved. Huh? And all the way through the churches, the seven churches. The false doctrines that hold men, that deceive men, that ultimately people are going to wind up in hell. Saying, I'm not supposed to be here. No, you aren't. You live like hell. You live like the devil. You're going you're gonna to live with... If you live like the devil here, you're going to live like the devil there. It's time to those of you who are, who are not convinced to live right, I challenge you. Open up your Bible and start reading your Bible. From Genesis 1-1 every day, just start reading your Bible. Just read your Bible an hour a day. In about 90 days, you'll get through the whole thing. Find out whether or not, at the end of that, you can justify wrong, wrong conduct and wrong deeds and wrong living. You can't. God's pleading with every man everywhere, all people everywhere. He's commanding everybody to repent. God's commanding that you don't allow the world in your life. That you don't fellowship with the world. That you're not friends with the world. Because people are going to have to get this. We want to edit God's word. We want to make it fit to our own purposes and interests and the way we view things. That's self-justification. That's self-righteousness. There is a righteousness which is by God. There's a righteousness that is given to us by obedience to the faith. A righteousness that comes because we're born of the Spirit and made a new creation. A righteousness that comes to into our lives because we're willing to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. Listen, we're going to have to get this right. I want, we are in perilous times. We're in days, doctrines of devils, seducing spirits. We're in days times and it's going to continue to get worse until ultimately Satan will be bowed down to and worshipped and his mark of slavery will be received in men's foreheads because he's always wanted to be worshipped he wants to be worshipped now he wants to be he wants to be master he wants to be ruler Father's powered you and I to stand up in his way. To come out from among them. To be ivrit. To be ivrit. To be separate. To be ivrit or Hebrew in that sense. To be God's people. To be the people of the Lord. And then he takes it to another level. 
calls us sons, daughters, children of the Most High, the people of the Lord, the army of the, uh, 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 of the living God. Fausta gina masa dola mo ki pere de pi. E ramon satana mo. It's something you do continually every day, every meeting. Every moment, every waking, every waking moment. Just consecrate yourself to serve the Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm yours. I want to be yours. I want to walk with you. Establish everything in my life that is you, you purpose to establish. Holy Spirit. Lead me, guide me, teach me. I'll follow you, I'll serve you, Lord. Just worshiping him and thanking him and consecrating your life to him. The things that are wrong in your life, cut them off. Cut them off. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to burn in your life. Oh, it's the cool to be, I tell you. Let the fire, let the fire of God, find the necessity. Find the necessity for the fire of God. You know, if you were in minus 30 right now, you'd find a necessity for a fireplace. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't even care how much clothes you put on, you still find a necessity for a fireplace. There's a necessity. <laughs> if you were in a dark place, a total dark place, there's a darkness that causes men to gnaw their tongues. There's a wrath of God that will be poured out. You listen to me. When John said, you offspring of vipers, who, how did you get the message to flee from the wrath that is about to come down from God? He, did you know he was speaking by the Holy Ghost? He wasn't an angry prophet. He was actually speaking by the loving words of the Father. Hello? Hello? There's a warning. Father has a, Father has a wrath and an indignation against sin. I don't care who you say you are. If sin is in your life and iniquity is allowed to dominate you and control you and it's something that you continually retreat to. Somebody said, well, I only get involved in pornography once a month. Yeah. It's got a hold of you. Oh, I only fall down into that thing. Yeah, Satan, just, Satan knows. It just, he, anytime he wants to come, he just take you. It's time you learn how to overcome sin. It's time, it's time you learn how to come out from among them. Listen, movies, you listen to me. There is, a, there, is a, what, there is something that is going on in the strategy of Satan where there's a formula in moving making that literally has in it, and they know what they're doing. It is lasciviousness. It is, by definition in the formula, lasciviousness. And you cannot watch it without actually engaging in lasciviousness. And the Lord said, you're not coming in. You're going to burn in hell. That's not the angry prophet. That's God's fiery indignation against sin. And you better be warned. Because you've got a Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 that will not let up on this thing. And I would rather God's people come and walk with God because they found out how wonderful and loving he is. But if we need to jumpstart the program with rec you recognizing that his wrath and his anger is about to be poured out on sin and iniquity in everyone who is a worker of iniquity, then that is going to jumpstart things. You're going to realize you can't continue on where you're at. This is my job. There needs to be A holy fear of God in your life. There needs to be the awesome awareness that God is going to bring you into account for every deed that is done in your body and that He hates sin and iniquity and He's never changed His heart or His disposition about it. That His wrath abides upon all wickedness. One day... The, I've had the Lord speak to me in some very strong ways. And he always speaks to me with his word. But one day I was dealing with some people involved in some of these things that are going on. That is almost every day ordinary. has become commonplace even in Christian's life. And the Lord spoke to me and said, my hand 
shall find all of them who hate me. My right hand shall seek them out. And if you understand that psalm, it's in the context of him casting down the wicked and the evildoers and the workers of iniquity. People, it's time for us to quit self-justifying sin and ungodliness and acceptance of worldly things. Worldliness is a defined today in the same way. The other day, I googled worldliness to look at all the definitions that the secular world attributes to worldliness. They got it right. They got it right. And I'm thinking, isn't it amazing that the world has more spiritual discernment between what is right and wrong and more accurate definitions than God's people? Well, they have no need to be deceived about the truth. They're already prisoners of hell. Straight and strategy doesn't need to redefine things for them. You hear, you hear what I'm saying to you? You need to come out from among them and be, be separate, says God. Touch not the unclean thing. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Lord, we thank you that you give us a sobriety. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've come to supply us with the fear of the Lord that hates evil. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can rely upon you, that all we've got to do is be real with you, and you supply to us, you both will and do in us, of your good pleasure. You give us the fear of the Lord. You give us a right understanding. You give us discernment. You give us insight. You give us wisdom. You give us knowledge. You give us the knowledge of the holy. You show us what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is evil. And you strengthen us to choose the good and refuse the evil. And you fill us with your joy. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that there is not one single person that is in this place right now that would leave out of ear determined to live their own life. But the opposite, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that everybody in this place will leave out of here consecrated, bowing themselves, determined to live the life that you have defined for us to live. Father, we are people. And we're going to do it your way. And we thank you for the blood that washed us and cleansed us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you sacrificed your life for us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're so faithful to us. That even though we've grieved you so many times, and even though we've walked in our own way, yet you're still there with your love and your mercy to teach us the right way and how to walk in it. So, Father, I thank you for strengthening every person in this place. Father, I thank you for causing every person in this place to be stirred with your righteous cause. With a holy indignation. With the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom and counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and understanding. The spirit of strength and might and the fear of the Lord. Oh, God. Those of you that are standing in here right now and you've had reoccurring sin going on in your life that you continue to allow, I want you to let the Lord deliver you. He is Savior. He is the Deliverer. Jesus Christ did not come to save people who want to continue in sin. He came to save people who wanted to be delivered out of it. Not continue in it. He came to save people that no, wanted, no longer wanted to live under the rulership of darkness and under the shadow of death. Those who sat in darkness, under the shadow of death, to them light has sprung up. But many men love darkness rather than light because they love sin. They love evil. They love the deeds of iniquity. It's time that God's people have a dividing line. Have a separation that is supplied to us by heaven, by the word of God, and by the spirit of the Lord. It's time that in that separation, we begin to yield to the Holy Ghost. 
and begin to move in God's love, God's joy, God's goodness, God's Holy Ghost pleasures. Being continually filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no pleasure to match it. I've discovered the salvation that I have in the Word of God. We want you to discover the salvation that you have in the Word of God. We want you to discover Christ Jesus, the Redeemer, not in some kind of a personalized fashion, but as He has described who He is and what He does and the results of what He does in His Word. And let that then bear witness to what you have. And if it doesn't bear witness to what you have, then repent and get what the Word of God describes. Amen? Amen. Now, dear people, walk in love as dear children. Don't have any quarrelings going on. Don't have any complaining going on. Don't have any arguing going on. Just walk in love. And by all means, don't have the works of the flesh going on. Don't allow demon power to rule your life. I was, I'm going to say this before closing. There was a person that people looked at as a great and a mighty man of God, and he was preaching. And he was really basically telling folks that they really didn't need to be too concerned about sin because Jesus took care of it all and understands. And by the way, there's going to be some people that live some terrible lives, so you're going to find them in heaven, so don't be surprised. Well, when he was saying it, it didn't matter to me what kind of gifts of the Spirit was working in his life. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was deception because it was contrary to the Word of God. It came out a number of years later that he was a, a practicing homosexual. And so he was speaking out of that spirit. And men had lifted him and exalted him to, and this hasn't just happened once. It's happened many different times on many different levels. People, we dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. It's time we, God's people, I've heard men of God say this over the, over the years and over the generations has been written down. In the last days, which the time we find ourselves in right now, the greatest and most important gift that needs to be operation in God's people's life and in the church is discerning of spirits. We can look at the Spirit of the Lord, the character and the nature of the Spirit of the Lord that is described very perfectly in the Word of God. None of us should have any problems from there on, knowing what's right and wrong. The world knows what's right and wrong. It's time the church knows what's right and wrong. It's time you know what's right and wrong. It's time you quit self-justifying. I'm going to stay with this just, just a one more minute because I know God, is the Holy Ghost, is dealing with a couple of people's lives in here. And I want you to get this thing settled because you haven't got a promise for another 24 hours. You plan your life as though you're going to live, exist forever. You, God exists forever. It is appointed unto you to die and no one knows what that time and that moment is. When God sees that you're not going to change and it's beyond hopes of repair. It's what I like to believe. Because he's so merciful and so full of loving kindness. But here's what I know. I know every day that you prolong the decision of complete surrender to the Lord, every day that you continue to allow the deceitfulness of sin to work in your life is another day that you've given yourself to going to a place of no return and hardening yourself against the working of the Holy Ghost. It's another day of additive impact upon your life spiritually that would fortify you against doing what God has called you to do. And I'm going to plead with you. I, 
I'm going to plead with one person. I'll plead with... One person as much as I plead with a hundred, a thousand. Every soul is important to God. There's no one left out in this love that he has to where that he spared no expense. Let God heal you right now. God, the Holy Spirit's here to heal you. If you got sin going on in your life, it's a crookedness. It's a perversion. It's a hurt. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a problem in your spirit, and God wants to heal you. He wants to make your way right. It's to heal you the worst disease known to man. Death. Sue taught all my sickies. How many souls? How many lives? Could be redeemed and delivered from the snare of sin and death if you would just totally give yourself over to Jesus today. We just totally give ourselves over to the purposes of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Lord just wants us to have a response in this. Where you lead me, Lord, I will follow you. He wants to lead us every moment of the day. He wants to direct us in his way. Hallelujah. All we have to do is be willing. And my, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. to keep you on Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, God is good and His mercy endures forever. Amen. He doesn't, he doesn't grow weary. His faithfulness doesn't fail. Huh? His mercy is new every morning. His commitment to perfect everything that concerns us goes beyond all calculation now, doesn't it thank you Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus